стали русский мир. Вот. И поэтому буквально несколько дней назад группа коллектива РАФа, Республика Донецка, их было около 10-12 человек. Вот тут 6 человек, 6 этих трупов были найдены в посадке под Киевом. Значит, они были расстреляны, вот, без труда и средства. Были казнены, вот, и так будет с каждыми мудаками и водами, которые посягнули на территориальную целостность. Going on to exhibit two. These are examples of uh, shots from the ultra nationalists. This is in Nazi regalia during a funeral. Of course, you have to drill down and verify sources and so forth. This is an example of a um, staged uh, event. So they, they restaged the atrocity or the uh, bombing uh, for this filming, which I don't know how horrible that is. But uh, this is a woman uh, shouting bloodthirsty curses uh, that everyone must be murdered, uh, presumably of the Russians. Um, and um, so uh, then we have an example here of, of a bunch of uh, ultra nationalists salute. Here, uh, Cat Oman remarks that he would not be allowed to have such a user name in Austria and that it could result in a prison sentence. I have no idea. And then here, here is the, uh, the head of um, a group called Just Foreign Policy. And um, he's asking about Zaluzny's affiliation with the leader of right sector, uh, Yarosh, uh, which uh, espouses Nazi uh, neo Nazi ideology. You know, if Clearly, we don't have a de-escalatory mood. This is Mr. Vindman, who's a prominent foreign policy figure in the United States, uh, celebrating this uh, attack. Do we have a posting regarding a neo-Nazi indoctrination of children? Uh, here's somebody wishing to blow up the statue to Stefan Bandera, who uh, deserves no introduction. Uh, he was a leader of uh, the uh, Ukrainian nationalists against the Soviets and was allied with the Nazis. This is a, a five-year-old who was killed by Ukrainian shelling into a civilian area in Donetsk. An example of more uh, neo-Nazi type behaviors. Um, so, you know, this is the most horrifying. This is a man being led up to be executed in mass graves underneath. Um, and so you would think there'd be enough information that shot you could figure out what's going on here to, uh, and Russia has asked for a war crime investigation into that. This is an example of a prank call where the head of the Association of Defense Enterprises in Ukraine admitted that the United States controls all military operations in Kiev. Um,
links to Bandera, CIA declassified documents that show he's a real nasty character. Here's Petro Poroshenko saying that your children will be, uh, you know, in uh, basements getting bombed. Ours will go to school. Pictures of the bombing of Donetsk City. White phosphorus, which is illegal, if true. Uh, this is an article about the tracking down and execution and abuse of collaborators. And this is a guy testifying to the fact that there being some civilians are being executed for even accepting food from the Russians. You know, these taken in isolation, any one of them could be dismissed, but uh, overall, it's a disturbing picture. Here is a, a lecture from the University of Ottawa, to the professor there. Um, and he's done a lot of work on the Ukraine. Uh, and let's see here. They have outside power relative to the numbers, in particular, the neonazi uh, founder and the first one of Azov Battalion threatened Zelensky against making a peace deal at the beginning of the war. Here is another picture of that massacre. Um, so these people very much look like they're being executed. This is apparently the guy who had just taken up the hill. And the film did have metadata in it indicating the date this occurred would have been during a Ukrainian possession of uh, Kupiansk, not the Russian possession of Kupiansk. <clears throat> this is a famous Nazi swastika kerfuffle over uh, Valery's allusion. But this is hardly, this is the most disturbing. <laughs> so this is where they're describing that the losses from disappearing collaborators are so great that they would have to re-census the area and that they're just executed. This is uh, the most disturbing one I've seen in recent days. Here we have a testimonial in the Solodar direction of the uh, Luhansk People's Republic. Uh, uh, so this would be the, um, the what used to be called separatists or devolutionists or federalists of the uh, Donetsk uh, who are allied to the Russians. Seeing a lot of Polish and German mercenaries. Not surprising. This is a lot of photos are on the internet about this. This tends to happen to gypsies as well who are caught stealing. This is a form of punishment in the Ukraine for collaborators and gypsies who are caught stealing. See that gypsies are losing role, but there often are uh, So to give you an idea of he's pointing to the responses to minimizing the, you know, uh, the improperness of that type of punishment. And the question is, what are these people tying up to these polls up to? And how much of it is political and how much of it is uh, small crime? This is a woman testifying 
that the Ukrainians deliberately leveled the city of Zolotoya, you know, as a part of a scorched earth campaign. This is again the picture of people that were executed. So I guess what he's implying here is that we know that only the ultra-nationalists would be committing these crimes. Because he's saying parts of the foreign uh, contributors to the effort and the uh, regular army uh, doesn't want to be involved in uh, attacks against civilians. This is a uh, Michael Tracy uh, pointing to the Intercept article about the U.S. groups on the ground in the Ukraine. So that'll probably be an interesting article to follow up on. And this is uh, Quincy Institute George B. warning that uh, we aren't seeing any signs of de-escalation on either side. Is the Ukrainian POW who said he was uh, crippled for refusing to go into battle, but that's the IDAR battalion. That's a pretty hardcore battalion. So these are probably guys who had Chechens who we like to portray as fearsome. So, uh, you know, these are Donetsk people. And, uh, you know, saying they don't want to live in the Ukraine that's been created in the post two environment. Um, I think it's really been night and day, the treatment of uh, people with the uh, you know, Russo Ukrainian affiliations towards Russia uh, since 2014. Here's Yuganov for saying that they are facing a sort of a re-manifestation of another wave of attack from Europe to NATO. I'm calling it the Fourth Reich because, of course, a lot of the NATO original high command were former members of the Fourth Reich. I don't know the exact percentage, but there were considerable amount of use of experienced German officers in NATO. Here's Jeff Sachs uh, describing that he believes it must clearly be the U.S. who uh, did the attack on Nord Stream 2. And, you know, Jeff Sachs' view is that we, we need to de-escalate. Um, and this uh, here's another example of people describing genocide against Russian-speaking Ukrainians. Mass graves scattered from across eastern Ukraine, from which bodies of civilians are regularly exhumed. The Donbass will follow the genocide of the Russian-speaking population.
что не захотели иметь вот эти хайдиты. I never been afraid for one day for the Russian army because they are simply not here. Special monitoring mission to Ukraine performs its duties in the capacities of the government to support the Kiev authorities and their investigators. Well, I'm not sure if you're going to be able to do it. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to do it. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to do it. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to do it. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to do it. I'm not sure if you're going to be